We, I was called to hold a special meeting in conversations with um, school committee members and a select board member. Um, the idea was that for us to look at our budget. After, this is coming off the select board meeting on Monday night. For us to look at our budget and if we can possibly reduce our budget by 100000 um, they may be able to put the, get the budget through without doing an override. Mm -hmm. And the concern obviously being the whether or not the override would go through, override happening last year, what's the appetite, that kind of thing. And they might also be in a spot to do it. That's my general, some of you were there that night, you probably have a little bit more, more color to that that comment, but that was what it was. So we had a 40 hour notice. So people are wondering why we're having meetings at the exact same time as the select board. I was told that the select board would meet on Friday. We met within 40 hour notice. I had a meeting prior to this for negotiations. So we got, we're stuck here at seven. So that's why, for those of you wondering what's going on with the two government bodies not really same. fully seamlessly working together on that stuff. But we've had conversations with them um, during the week. At least I have. I've, I've spoken with with, um, with Scott and kind of got the general overview of what they were doing. Oh, here comes Doug. Oh, sorry. Over at Select Board. Well, that's what I said that you were over there. That's probably a good thing. Did they start at 6:30? Uh, yes. I thought it was like six. I thought it was like 6:30. So. Okay. Excellent. So I was just summarizing, Doug. Okay. Welcome. Um, I was just summarizing that we had heard to. That possibly if we can reduce our budget by a hundred thousand um, dollars, that the select board may have a way to get this budget through without having to do an override. Is that as you left that meeting? Is that still where they're kind of at? Uh, they didn't state it uh, in that way. What they're doing tonight over there is um, looking at the other, the rest of the town budget, other departments. Um, did mention, you know, uh, uh, requests to administration, um, and but they didn't characterize it the way you just characterized it in terms of. The, I mean, they they're not planning. They said uh, they're not planning. You know, on, in the meeting, they said they weren't planning to vote on whether to have an override or not. Okay. Tonight. That's fair enough because they won't know what we're doing, I guess. But they need to let the town know by Monday, right? So they're going to have a they plan on to, at their Monday meeting okay. to um, make that determination. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. that puts us in a unique situation because the original budget that we put together was to solve the financial problem of the school and its reliance on school choice as a revenue source. It's been not been stable the last, especially in the last year, in years moving forward. In order for us to reduce the budget, as we've kind of come, we've Ben and I have met. Obviously, when we heard this, we've kind of did some um, some head scratching. Um, is that we had built a budget with a a little bit more in the override, so that we took all staffing, teacher staffing, off of school choice. There were still some IAs on school choice, but those are kind of our smaller numbers and easier to move. And that gave us with a surplus in school choice so that we had some flexibility if there's any movement in that number next year. And for those watching, numbers of school choice depend on your enrollment. And enrollment can change from year to year. It can go up, it can go down. Spend increments can go up, they can go down. And so you really, a population the size of Sunderland, at a minimum, you're talking $50,000 you want to have as a buffer. I would say probably even a little bit more because that number was actually given to Waitley as their minimum. Um, but when you're in tough times, I understand that number. So I guess my only concern is if we lower this <clears throat> and they go for an override, that override's not going to fix. The idea is that we are going forward, like if we're going to ask the town for money, we are going to fix the financial problem of the school. And so I, I hand it back to you, Mr. Chair. And I, so we have. What do we have? Ninety thousand in cuts that Ben and I left our meeting with. Um, yep. Was it this morning? Was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, and we were talking about what are we going to do about the last ten? Because the last ten is starting to get really tight as it goes into programs. But um, and I'm not sure if that's in the. Is that what we pro you're providing? Yes. Okay. So 
we can talk about what that looks like, or do you want to talk more about, I, I kind of took over, I jumped right in, but I was trying to. I'm going to take it. Yeah, if you want to hear really Robert's rules about it, we should have a motion on the table yeah. before we discuss, but, you know, uh, we're in a tough spot. We don't know, there are no good options on the table. Uh, we know that if we go along with the suggestion to cut out 100K, that uh, it's, we've already frozen things to get where we are. So now you're really, you're in permafrost here, and, and you can't do this year to year. Um, at the same time, I get the idea that uh, we can propose what we like, but even if it gets to an override, there's a ballot, and the voters mm -hmm. get to decide whether they prove it or not. Um, I think I do want to discuss, you know, just among us, uh, what we think is the right thing to do, uh, but also in terms of the downside if we if we put off an override for a year, what is that bias? Besides just some goodwill and some fatigue, potentially from the ballot box. It, I mean, and what does it cost us? Ben, you said you, you worked with Darius to uh, figure out what that would even look like. And you're still you're reaching for another 10K. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What is that? At, at this point, it would be staffing. Staffing. Okay. Right. Well, it's really, it's the, computers, the computers first. So, yep. Yep. so the computers are the, easy, are the easiest about, thing going back and forth. Those darn computers are being wheeled around. Well, are you talking <laughs> about the, the 90,000 that we... Exactly. Yeah. So um, that was um, taking 40,000 of the school choice um, and putting it back... Um, Back on, on choice. Yeah. On choice. Uh, technology was twenty thousand, so now we're at sixty. A fourth instructional assistant, um, approximately twenty-three thousand, so we're at eighty-three. And then through circuit breaker, so we're at ninety-three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've so gone from three fifty-four to the right number. Over. So you've gone from a difference of three fifty-four to one fourteen. To now 260 or 56. And so to clarify, because more people are watching than ever, mm -hmm. I hope, um, it's, <clears throat> when you talk about those two numbers in there that might be confusing, is one is the school choice number was part of the override was mm -hmm. that we, we shifted all monies, we shifted all staff positions off school choice to give us a buffer so that we would not have to go next year to an override if we continue to have a, a fluctuation in school choice. Mm -hmm that we would have a small buffer there, um, in which you really should have is almost healthy spending is full school choice and it is, it is a year in arrear. You're spending all the money you get from school choice a year later, but we would have a smaller. So what we're doing instead of all 50,000, mm -hmm. we could move all 50,000, but we, we still got to have at least $10,000 for one or two kids moving. Let's play a little bit of a, a thing there. So we're doing 40,000 of that back to the, um, off to the local back up, back on. So that's that one. And the other one, he said circuit breaker. Basically, we have no circuit breaker now, but based on that student that um, we talked about at the last meeting, um, that was there was a mix between the tuition and choice. We can now can apply for circuit breaker on that, and we can also ask for extraordinary relief. So that's around it's around twelve thousand dollars. We put in ten to make sure that we get it. Um, you know, so there might be a little bit more there, so we, that's where the other ten thousand dollars came from there. So, <clears throat> so it costs you uh, cost risk because if you do have people, like I said, spending permits up down. Yep. Uh, you don't have that fifty k buffer anymore, uh, so you could be in a tough situation uh, if you do have variants. Yeah, exactly. Correct. If you had three school, if you have three school choice students difference, I don't even say leave difference between the ex exiting class and the class coming in. Yeah. You know, right now it looks like it's going to be okay healthy wise. So you know, it's not. But if you was for sudden change, you would we would start off the school year in deficit and have to freeze an account or whatever that kind of thing. And, you know that kind of. And and we have had a few Sunderland residents in the past couple months move out um, and are still coming to Sunderland. So they, there will be a slight bump 
in school choice numbers from now to the That's end good. of the year. But we're not talking anything significant that would, you know, solve this issue. And whether or not another school year they choose. Correct. Not to stay. Right. That's. I mean, for all we know, that's that's just for the eighteen nineteen right. school year, until June. So that's why you have that buffer, and so you have a little bit of. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what and and that got us to. Where number was that total number? That got us to two sixty. Uh, yeah, a, a difference of two hundred sixty thousand four hundred fifty six dollars, or a ten percent increase versus a thirteen point six. Yeah, we got a couple questions. So, just to clarify first, this the new one of two sixty four fifty six. Does that include regular teacher salaries on being funded by school choice? Part of one to the tune of forty thousand dollars. Part of one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's the one we just put back on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the only other salaries on coming from school choice on this fourth budget, I guess, yeah. would be. Part of one salary, but then IAs and SPED IAs. Right. Mm -hmm. Tutors, too. Tutors. Mm -hmm. I mean, so those are, for me, I'm almost, I can count those as additional to basic services. So one of the questions I would have going forward is if we did go for the, the entire $350,000 and go for an override, and, and Darius, you mentioned like it, to solve our financial problems going next year, and, and I think we've all talked about it. We, there's no crystal ball, but would that actually solve our financial problems if we request a $350,000 override and it passes. Or well, well how do we have a budget and it implies some level of override that right. we don't know yet. Right. How, yeah. right. Realistically, where could we find ourselves next year? I mean, that's one of the, whatever budget, I think the second question we have to ask ourselves, whatever budget we approve is where are we going to be next year because mm -hmm. we have to give that warning or that heads up. So, I mean, do, 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 well, if, where would here's, we be if we could? Here's my take. I, I, before we even had the remainder of the discussion at the last meeting, I just, for the heck of it, said, okay, so where are we stand with the budget? And that was before we put that teacher back into the local. And give or take 4.5% going forward to the following year. Here's the thing. If you go for an override, it adds to the tax base. Right. And that tax base moves you forward. You do this, it's one and done. So it's putting really a band-aid on an open wound, right. in my professional opinion. You go for an override, you're at least trying to sew up the wound. Um, it, it took you a long time to get to the place you're in in school choice. It's going to take you a long time to dig yourselves out of that. There's no question about that. So this is not going to fix it even if you go with an override, but it's going to go a long way to helping you rebuild. Um, because really what's happening is your expenses are outstripping your revenues across the board, no matter what the funding source is. And, you know, you've got a president who is now hinted that federal entitlement grants are going to be decreased by 10% next year. So again, that takes a hit on your special education grant, your Title I grant, those kinds of things. So, you know, that's all of sort of the political surround over which we have no control. And, mm -hmm. You know, and I've basically plugged into the budget, which is just our standard practice at TMS, is to level fund what the federal grants are because you don't know at this point in time and you won't know until the summer what they're going to be. And you hope that you get a little more. Um, you know, we got a little more in special education this year, but it was because some districts either turned back the money or forfeited whatever, and then they redistributed. So, um, you know, we were able to get um, some more uh, special education grants. But it's, it's, you know, I mean, your reliance on funding sources that are volatile to the degree that you rely on them is a tough place to be. It really is. Yeah, I mean, and it's, um, you know, it is what allowed us in, you know, significant part to, you know, have budget increases over a number of years uh, that were like, you know, 2, 2.6, 1.13, 1.63, 1.67, 1.67, 2.4. Uh, those are both, you know, below inflation. That's, you know, we know the costs in the, in the building were going up more. Um, and, uh, 
you know, we've had some bigger ones lately, but even if going across the scope of time, it's, it's uh, um, um, this is actually from a select board person, <laughs> uh, you know, a mean of 2.8 and a you know, median to just over 2%. So uh, um, going back to FY07, um, I, you know, what you said about the, it's going to take a while to dig out and, and to your point of like, where are we going to be next year? Are we fixed problem? I mean, that was I, my comment, even in presenting that 350 to the select board last year is trying to be really transparent. It's like we moved away from the like cliff's edge to get to in the ballpark of 50, uh, thousand. But again, like we, it, it, this, even that 350 is not moving like, you know, all the way away. Now, you know, again, crystal balls, who knows, you know, that we could have negative news in that, we could have positive news with the Promise Act and, you know, get some money in here that would move us away and give us a cushion that we probably could help us for years to come. Um, you know, and, and so that that 350 felt like a, some some compromise of, of, you know, how much, um, you know, the town, how much appetite the town would have in terms of the amount of an override in a second year in a row. Um, uh, and, and so I'd like to think it would, it would, we'd have at least enough of a cushion to know like through next couple of years and then right. go from there to see, you know, how things have evolved since then. How much, if we go with this, uh, the, the, the 260, 456, what would that leave in school choice starting next year? It would leave $10,226.12. Right. And we would... Which, which could fluctuate in either direction. Yeah. Right. And we'd be right. spending $250, dollars uh, dollars Right. That are we going to expect to have that much in the, in the subsequent year? You know, that would, or are we going to get... To Judy's point, uh, if you're putting a bandaid on an open wound, then that just puts off when you address the open wound. So you're right. just addressing it next it year. It gets bigger next and year, because sometimes yeah. we can't do it again. Well, we know, I mean, when the override didn't pass after the 2008 collapse, right, we've been able, to your point, we've had less than inflation average growth in budget, even though the population of the student population is continued to grow. Yeah. And some of the things that helped us to recover are not options. We have recovered over this period in between, despite slow growth of our budget, partially through school choice, but we don't have the seats anymore. So if we end up in a situation like that again, we can't count on the grants or the you know, to the political climate point, uh, grants or school choice to help us dig back out of it even. Right. Because it was, there were a couple of years after FY09, the subsequent year, the federal grant that lasted a couple of years, help, also helped us bridge that gap, right. reverse the school choice situation. Um, there was a lot of positive things happening in school, yeah. and that's what actually gave us a lot of school choice dollars that then helped us bridge it for several more years. And while we were, as we were also gradually spending into the current year as opposed to future. So I guess, you know, my other, my concern is that, so it's really, I don't know how much it's going to, it's our decision, but we really have to be working in sync with the finance committee yeah. and, with, and with the select board because, so here's my concern is that, we're right that right now it's not built properly in the town in the funding where we heard from the select board at the last meeting they said your growth needs to be around eighty thousand dollars according to how the town is currently set up financially with the, the growth that it's getting that you need to be around eighty thousand dollars in growth well you know looking at that we have not been around eighty thousand dollars for the last three years yeah. and i'm looking through the last three years and um you're talking about salary growth at seventy six thousand so you have four thousand dollars less to maintenance, fuel, um, textbooks, textbooks computers. So, um, 
you know, so that's that's my concern in the in the you know in the bigger picture. So I'm looking. I'm and and, and like, it, uh, just to to <clears throat> piggy, piggyback on all of this, um, it's not just that our student overall student numbers have increased, the needs have as well. Um, we're looking at uh, close to 50 students next year receiving special education services, which is over 21% of our entire student body, um, which, is, which is high, which is high. Um, the state average is around 16 or 17 for special ed numbers. That was the one at the bottom, the bottom, the bottom. Right. Ben. I mean, I know any change, any abrupt change is unflexible. Mm -hmm. But if you have kids in, in district and people choicing in, then when that people choice in leave, that. yes, um, your bill goes back exactly. up. But it's not because uh, you're paying extra yeah. money, it's because some of the yeah. offset that you were getting in is gone. So you're still better off overall, uh, whether you decide not to have a program like Horizons and then have to send people out of district and you have a spike when they leave, or whether you have a program that brings people in and you have what appears to be a spike when they age out of the program, but actually they're just, you're just... So you brought up a good point. I think Ben needs to make a clarification of what is, you know, yeah. someone was talking about the, the sunsetting of Horizons. Yeah. You know, Horizons being, you know, why don't you tell what the history of what, how Horizons began and where it's at now because it has sunset to a, to a degree. Sure. Um, the Horizons program uh, started about six years ago um, when there was a cohort of students across the entire district, Sunderland included, that needed a substantially separate program. Um, rather than another elementary school in our district and Sunderland sending out of our district, we created the program here. Since that time, we've had two students um, throughout the past six years, two students move into Sunderland who were part of that substantially separate program. So once again, that program supported students who moved in. Now this original cohort is graduating this year. And although the sun has set on their graduation, we're still, now we're finding that the needs and the high needs are in our younger grades and significant needs. Um, and so in a way we're looking to start recycle the program all over again. So as far as, um, and, and I'm not exactly sure what uh, point the selectmen were trying to make the other night. Um, if it were when ki with kids graduating, all of those expenses should go away. Well, aside from maybe um, a couple individual assistants that provide student support, those those needs that are supported by the that funding source source is still there. And I did tell right. I did say that in, yeah. in the meeting when they asked about that. Yeah. That, um, that exactly that. I mean, that it's so much so that 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 cut didn't even make the pink sheet, right? Which is our red sheet of cuts we didn't want to make because that's how high the needs are for those kids just to access their regular core curriculum. Um, so, so yes, we could have sunsetted that if we wanted to be clean in, in a business model, that hmm. person is fired and then we hire another person to come in to do a job with the younger, with a different group of kids. Hmm. We just internally started shifting that. And so, and I guess it's not as transparent, and usually you don't have to be as transparent unless you're in a situation like this where you're shifting needs as the needs of kids come up, you're shifting your resources in the building to meet those needs. And so I guess if they were thinking this as, you know, if you're on the outside looking in, you have a separate program, those kids leave, the less separate program should go away. Well, we've already been starting to use the I resources did. of that program right. for other students in the building. Yeah, and I don't know if I had any other separate conversations with them, but I did say that in the meeting, at least in that moment, mm -hmm. I felt like they okay. heard it and digested okay. it. Okay, um, yeah. so. And even if those needs are low now, <clears throat> those needs will always be recurring. Yeah, so big. I mean, there's a tremendous cost savings to have that housed in district. Sure. And the moment we sunset it, mm -hmm. we'll need it again. So, mm -hmm. Ben, what is the cost of sending a student out that you can't have in house for those kind of needs? Uh, ranging from fifty to one hundred thousand plus. So, yeah. 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 So plus transportation. Yeah. yeah. So, 
you know, although they probably already may have specialized transportation, but a longer transportation, so it probably it's a more expensive transportation. So when you talk about when we, when we talk about that, I just kind of say that for you know people listening, that those are big numbers, and when you have these programs in house for a kid and a half, you can pay for a teacher. You know, and, yeah. and plus the teachers are supporting other kids who may be, you know, who are able to keep in with their, in their community that, you know, may be borderline. That's important. Right. It's great <clears throat> to educate the kids in town and keep them close. Mm -hmm. But even if you didn't care about kids, you wish you could get stuck with a bill for Horizons if you get stuck with a bill for sending kids out of district. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, <clears throat> it, I mean... So here's what I basically I've been thinking about coming forward. So the pink sheet is not one that I can see myself voting for. Right? So this one for me is the only way that I'm going to come to this is if the town votes, if the people say that through their vote that this is what they want. So this for me is off the table. And I've gotten emails from um, several people supporting this $350,000 budget. I haven't received one email against this. I haven't received one email saying to spend less, nothing. What I'm faced with looking at right now is, um, I think, and then correct me if I'm wrong, the decision we, re we really need to be looking at is this three, pushing along this $350,000 budget, which will require an override, or going for, and, and and this is where I'm uncomfortable, on the premise that this is going to solve all our budget problems and we're not going to have any problem next year. Or this $260,000 budget, which I think that we can get through without an override, and I think makes substantial steps going in the direction we want because it removes so many recurring expenses, mm -hmm. teacher salaries, off of school choice. It leaves a little bit of one, but to me that's like this is step one. Step two, maybe next year we move that over or we see where we go from there. With the idea that we pass this, this is not solving all our financial problems. It's a, I think it's a significant band-aid. I call it like a, maybe a four by eight instead of like yeah. a one by two. It's, it's a butterfly. Right, it, it, and then so we're gonna have to deal with it. But it, for me, it doesn't kick the can down the road. It begins to address it substantially. And the idea that it took a long time to get into this problem, it's gonna take us time to get out. So that's what I'm faced with. This $350,000 one that's gonna take an override or the $260,000 one that we may be able to get through but we have to deal with stuff next year. Am I sensing that right? And where do we go from there? Yeah. And the question, are, are both options on the table? It's, the truth is the larger option really isn't our choice. And we can, right. we can well, push exactly, hard for yes. I mean, it. It is a choice for this board. Yeah. It may not, come through, may not right. come through fruition due to, that's really another, another board's choice to decide if that's the correct manner to take. So. Um, I mean, the fact that that board sent it back and asked us to look at this option, you know, um, maybe not. I think that I think part of this board and and central office and, and working with Ben and such is that we do have to look at. This is not a one and done. This is a several year problem. If this is the fix, definitely we definitely know it's a several year problem. If we're going to do the reduction, the additional reduction, and try to go through without an override, and so we're going to have to look at what does the budgeting look like. I mean, it's going to be a much longer discussion, which could be healthy too. We started earlier, mm -hmm. you know, far earlier, and that kind of thing. And we look at the overall, mm -hmm. long term, you know, how this, the town's going to address education and funding. It, man. I mean, Go ahead. instead of just advocating, we we'll can play it through both ways. So I was going to say, right, if we. Um, If we, I mean, I get the, 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 um, the, the, the override are not, you know, it's not fun to have another thing no. to, to go out and organize for and, and vote, you know, in, the, in, the, in another town election and things like that. But, but, you know, that law wasn't to say, like, you don't <laughs> raise your taxes beyond two and a half percent. It was to say, if you do, there's an extra step that happens, you know? So I think there's this, this kind of like, um, um, this n that negative baggage on an override vote that is be way beyond, um, you know, what it should be. 
Um, maybe that's, I mean, certainly that partly that's just my bias. I don't like the law in the first place, but, um, but still, I mean, it's just a, that's just a procedural thing. It's if you're going to do it, this is what you have to do. So, um, now what could be the other consequences of, you know, of, uh, if it fails to pass, you know, um, you know, would the select, you know, then it goes back to, uh, um, you know, a, a cutting process. And would the, you know, would there be spite that would cause the cuts to be worse effectively, you know, or, or other, you know, other reasons of the, if you want to be more generous about the motivations that would make the cuts more dramatic on the school um, than the, you know, this 260 budget? I would hope not. Um, you know, so then the downside um, would be, um, you know, so there's potential downside is it doesn't pass. Yeah. Probably we're just back to the 260. It, the other thing is it does pass. We didn't do enough and we're back here next year uh, having to make similar kinds of decisions about what we're either asking the town for or what we're willing to cut. Or we ask for the override, it doesn't pass. We bring this $260,000 one forward and then have to ask for another override next year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just to go through this um, and really kind of flesh out the options. We either we present the 250 or we present the 260. If we present the 260, there's no guarantee that we won't still have to do an override. And then we'll be kicking ourselves that we are going to have to organize for an override that uh, isn't even like going to address our needs. Um, I'm not looking to antagonize the select board. They work very hard. I know there's no way that there's that much movement in the numbers happening on their side without them making tough choices and, and a lot of people doing a lot of hard work. Um, but again, uh, if, you, if you have to have a get out the vote effort, it should be one that does something for what you need. And mm -hmm. yeah. what I'm not clear on, and this is from uh, uh, talking with some of them, just if you put this much money on an override and you don't get the override, you don't necessarily, as I understand it, go back to the, the 260. It may be just whatever was part of the original budget that wasn't put to the override vote. Is that? Once, if the over, you're saying if the override, if we went for it and it fails, then yeah. the, then the if if assuming, which is the typical, like the, the town budget in, in town meeting passes contingent on the override passing, the override fails. Now that budget is no longer a valid budget. There's a special town meeting. Um, you know, again, the select board would tell make requests to us in terms of what they think. You know. Uh, to, that they'd want us to come in and pass another budget for that special town meeting, uh, and then and then a, a new a new budget would be voted in that special town meeting. I think it's, that's typical. It's my understanding, and I could be wrong on this though, so yeah. correct me. But that has the wording of the warrant. So if the override is for the entire budget, then the entire budget is default. If it is just for the school, the uh, elementary school, yeah, if this this number is contingent on the override. Then the school would be, that and, and, and that's and again, I'm, I'm that would throwing, be an, that would be an important I'm distinction. Irons of fire yeah. that they, if they have a different adjusted number, they may approach it very differently. They did say if you're looking at that big number, mm -hmm. it's going to say school on it. Yeah, and that's what they said, and I think that's why they were particular about saying that the school would be on it because it's not going to hold up the. They wanted to be clear that it's even going to hold the whole budget, and that's where I'm confused. Was it to hold the whole budget, or was it to be clear that this is the school's need, not the entire, not every department of the town? That would be an important clarification. It would yeah. be just the school, because last year's <clears throat> override was a general town override, yeah. and the select board was very clear last week that if they worded this next one, it would be specifically for the school. That's what I heard. I, yeah. So I have been saying that. I also, I think, um, some you know, including from with. And the select board has been pointed out to them that, you know, if you look at this over time, this is not, again, this is not um, a school budget issue hitting the town. Right. This is the, this, the, the school is actually, the school choice has subsidized 
all town departments growth over the last 10 years. Not, all, not, not every department, it's very department by department, but as a whole, the non-school part of the town budget has been partially subsidized by school choice money from this, from this our budget, which has allowed us to keep down how much we've asked for. So, and, 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 I, and they're kind of reluctantly seeing that. Uh, and I, I don't know, it would get them to change their mind in terms of how they present it. I don't know what, what the town thinks <laughs> they'd, they'd be more likely to vote for, is seeing it cast for the whole town or seeing it cast for the school. I, I, again, I wish I had that crystal ball, but, um, but, but, that's, but it's important to think about budgetarily and, and would that mean if it failed that it all would have to come out of the school budget? That would be a critical element of the whole and thing. And you'd be on the pink sheet. Because um, that hasn't been the case in the past. It was came back and, and worked through all, in all the whole town. Um, I mean, I'd like to, you know, as we have been, I'd like to, you know, make the select board aware that, yes, we know we have options, you know, depending on what we get. We still think that, you know, that um, I, I still feel like that the, that budget, the 350 increase, um, is the is the right one for the school in the town. If you tell us, you know, in the end, you don't, you're not going to go for an override, or if an override fails, you know, we'll deal with what we have to deal with. But I don't. I mean, I, I have some concern, like you said, I have some concern, and every you know, it every time about how much margin it actually leaves us, how much cushion it really leaves us going forward. And, and I do have that worry about either way, I guess, about being, you know, back here next year, um, but, uh, and, and having somewhat of a similar discussion, but um, I, I feel like I know we're gonna have the, dis I know we're gonna be back here having the discussion yeah. if, we, um, if we go with the 260 yes, budget. For sure. You know, and how much better is that if we didn't go for an override vote this year, I don't. Is um, have you got a feeling from the selectmen that just with two overrides back to back, uh, is that something they're not necessarily comfortable with? And would it be better to take a year off basically before pursuing the next one? I don't think that. Generally speaking, that two overrides back to back is a good idea anywhere. I don't. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. it doesn't go down. It doesn't. And and I think that one of the things that we do have to keep in mind, and, and I'm very cognizant of it, is those on fixed incomes. Yeah. That we don't enter into this lightly. Right. Um, but last year's bud. Uh, but my worry about the override too is last year's override. That was a band aid, right? Because the conversations for last year's override. Never once that anybody who was watching on TV or going to the, the select board meetings, they didn't have conversations about what the town actually needed. There were no conversations about what was actually needed to do this, this, this reset. We have one of the lowest tax rates in the area. Our teachers are paid amongst the lowest in the area. The conversation last year was, how much can we get through? Mm -hmm. How much can we get voted? Mm -hmm. And that's not, what, what do we need to make this right? That, that is a literal band-aid. So for me, that the, the, the override last year is, is come and gone. It didn't even really do anything. However, there are those on fixed incomes that see two years in a row, yeah. and they've just taken a hit this year. I, 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 for me, I do think that that, that that time is important. I mean, I would lean towards going, not depending upon the, the roll of the dice on an override, passing this budget that I thought the, the, the select board kind of indicated towards us could get through with the idea that this is one step in a long process and, and not enter into the, we're going to be back here next year um, in, in trepidation, knowing that we're going to do this. This is part of the long-term plan in order to, to make things right. And then I don't even know, maybe we might have to go to override next year, but maybe it's smaller. Right. But for me, it's almost like, let's, let's get done with what we can get done and not worry about you know what what will happen at the ballot box that's i mean that's where i'm leaning uh, i definitely hear what you're saying about people in fixed incomes and i think if anyone out there i mean knowing that this is going to be a rolling budget issue going forward and there are 
uh, people who can be reached and who may choose to vote, or you know, if if you reach out to them, there's also people who always vote on these issues, some on one side, some on the other. Mm -hmm. And and what I'll say is, uh, if you have some energy to organize against an override, uh, don't forget to send a note to our friends in Boston, uh, because everyone in town pays either income tax or depending on the scale or sales tax, the state funds are spread more equitably over the population of the town than are just town funds. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely also room in the discussion for leaning on state sources of funding. Um, because I like options, we have a select board meeting in progress that we can catch. We can vote something here. They have, it sounds like Doug, uh, they plan to make some more uh, definitive choices Monday. Um, I know I have a hard conflict Monday evening, just in terms of public meeting law, the availability of people that need to put out a notice. Um, is there an opportunity for a quorum of this group if we had to do one more? I mean, we can agree on something here now. Whoever is available can go see what they have to say. And if it causes us to rethink whatever we decide now, then there's an opportunity still, if we want to reach for it, possibly to do something else prior to their Monday meeting. Does that sound? And we have a school committee meeting scheduled for next Thursday, but that would be too late. It would be too late for right. the, their Monday discussion. Yeah. Do, do they, but I forget, do they, do, so do they have to put on, the, do their numbers have to be what we pass? On the, what they put to the, to no. the, on the, on no, the. No, they, they, they communicated that, you know, the school budget or any municipality budget can be changed up in, to town meeting. Right. They have to say town, town meeting floor. Meeting floor, right. somebody could vote to amend. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know you can do that. I just was wondering in terms, yeah, in terms of what the, you know, I mean, I guess by Monday they just, they have to decide whether or not they're going for an override. Um, they don't have to decide what budget, I don't know if they have to have the, what budget they're presenting at the town meeting. You're saying, it sounds like you're saying that can be changed right up until I believe so, yeah. town meeting. We could yeah. vote it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If we have to vote something different, we could. It, it's entirely possible. Right. As long as you get a quorum together. Yeah. Uh, so at this point... And you wouldn't necessarily have to. At this point, you have reduced the budget by $93,658. So you are within $6,342 of where the selectmen want you to be. Yeah. So you're not fully at 100 but you've come frightfully close. We've got... 10k handkerchief. Right. I mean, but you know, in realistically, with with moving funds, you we could reduce it by another 10,000. You know, we could find something in there that um, there's a lot of moving parts still that you're going to be able to find 10,000. Especially when we get to the end. I mean, we're running we're running so close to the fence now that it's like we've gotten rid of every kind of other buffer. Um, but there is, you know. Um, between will chapter 70 come in differently I hate to spend that money before we even have it but yeah. it's gonna be about ten thousand dollar difference at least you know there's some other kind of things that you know um, that might be out there that we can do you know yeah. chapter seven but chapter 70 doesn't come into as revenue for us right it's coming to the town right but it would give the town. It would give the town that buffer, right? Right. Yeah. Much more to right. put towards the cause. So even with a yeah, 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 not quite but there 6, by six thousand chapter seven. Yeah, would yeah, take yeah. Care I get that. it. I get it. It's just it's it's important to what's in my only. It's important for the general public to understand that this is already after another round of cuts. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say it out loud. Yeah. This is already three other instructional assistants. This is already putting food salaries onto the cost of lunch revolving account, mm -hmm. which we haven't done in the past. This gets rid of $5,000 of custodial temp services for when we have issues with temp custodians being out. This is taking um, a grant salary that we use for before childhood, reorganizing it and taking 5,000 of Sunderland's share of it <coughs> and putting it onto this. It is 
um, taking thirteen thousand dollars of a retirement and putting it on a warrant. It's twenty thousand dollars of computer hardware. It's cutting a fourteen thousand dollar Spanish position. It's re reducing OT from a full time position to a point eight position, and it's uh, the art teacher and the ones are there. Yeah. So. so Inspect transportation down by 5,200. That is a moving number, but we got it down this year. So those are all, and I don't know if anything else. Freezing accounts this year. The freezing of accounts this year to take off. Right. That's yeah. That all happened off. before. That's before this, the this 100,000 today. today. I just want to say, because we, yeah. we don't list it all. It's I like, know. Oh, they just, right, they're, right, not, right. they're not really straining there. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, so there's already going to be a reduction of some things that are happening. It's an important reminder. That's, um, you know, it's going to be a tight budget year already for yeah. um, for and, us here. And just pointing out that it's also completely unsustainable in the long run. It's, you right. just need a correction yeah. coming yeah. over the yeah. next few because years. Because we've made shifts on our side of the ledger yesterday to offload the school choice deficit for FY19, including the $30,000 that Ben has put on the table to help towards that end. Um, so that was executed on our side. I sent the list over to the town accountant so that he can do the books on the town side. Um, so that's happened as of today. But that's, you know, 150 some odd thousand dollars worth of impact either going on to a SPED grant or being offloaded to, you know, um, revolving accounts, other revolving accounts within the school, um, you know, a summer reap uh, or a summer. Run. Uh, you know, Horizons revolving account using the REIT grant to offset. So, I mean, we've done all of that, but we've hit up a whole bunch of other sources. So, therefore, we deplete those sources, plus the $30,000 worth of cuts that Ben has offered up uh, in order to make school choice whole for this year. So, it's happened on our side of the ledger. Um, like I say, I did send that over to uh, the town account today, so it can happen on the town side as well. So, it sounds like if we vote the 350, the school wears the override, and it passes it through town meeting and the ballot box, or it doesn't. If we go for the lower number, um, where there's no guarantee that we won't still be looking at an override, although it might get you more goodwill from whoever, but you're still, yeah, and. Everything you just listed, again, which was not even before this round of cuts, um, I can't get behind the 260 number without getting some kind of acknowledgement mm -hmm. from yeah, the town that, yeah, this is it's just to tide you over. That it's, it's not a sustainable budget and it's not. Yeah, because not only does it not really fix the overall problem, but now you've decreased services. And to get those back and fix the problem, you're compounding things. Exactly. And, and if we end up on the uh, wrong side of that seesaw where, we, where now we have three times more choice in than choice out, and if that starts to swing the other way, then it, it really gets slippery, mm -hmm. which when you start cutting programs, So just for the sake of knowing what the numbers are, the budget budget you voted the other um, the other night at your uh, last meeting that I was at with you was two million nine hundred fifty four thousand nine hundred forty six dollars. So that was the budget you had voted. This budget um, that we worked on with the ninety three or close to ninety four thousand dollars of cuts is $2,861,288. So it, it sounds like, <clears throat> it sounds like the committee wants to, I don't know if that's going to go. It sounds like you want to go to the lower number but have a conversation at the same time to make sure it's really understood. I, I would say, because if they can make yeah. it happen, I know we're kicking the can down, and instead of kicking it down, we're moving it carefully down and keeping an eye on it, and we're going to yeah. try to build toward it. And they got to be with us, a partner on building toward it. 
I mean, they know that. They yeah. Know, I mean, we've had conversations with them. They know that this problem is not going to go away without. It's not going to go away if we don't do the override scenarios. The problem is not going to go away. Yeah. You know, there may be new options next year, along with a different amount of an override. There may be you know, maybe the Promise Act comes through. I mean, there's some promises, you know, the kind of thing, and maybe we'll have a different set of numbers around our problem next year. But there's still going to be a problem. And there's more time to organize and educate and have people understand. Yep. Potentially also. So I would echo what Doug said. The two and a half percent thing. Uh, has gotten into public consciousness that this is like the end all be all of where budgeting process should happen. And all that is historically was just a number to make government more transparent. That if you're going to go above and beyond two and a half, it, the voters have to know. So there's nothing wrong with going over two and a half percent. That, that the whole idea of keeping it below does, is illogical. What we're faced with now is do we make an incremental approach or we try to go all in? And, and the only worry that I have right now is that the, the, the town idea that if we go all in, then we won't have any issues anymore. And I don't know that I can sell that. So the incremental approach, I mean, it's, and it is dependent upon have partnering with the select board and knowing that what we're going to have to do next year. But again, that's where I'm kind of leaning towards that. It's a long-term solution that we're going to have to take it. I, I like the, the first step of... For me, it's getting all those salaries. Been looking at for several years now, getting all those salaries off, and there's a huge movement in that direction. I think that's a good first start. And, and again, I, I feel like that we were kind of given that instruction by by the select board. And and then I I applaud uh, Ben Dares, Judy for bringing forth like uh, like the sixth or seventh budget as well. They've been very responsive and and. It's the beauty of a linked workbook. Yeah. <laughs> it's a change. Once it's built, the changes are easy. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah, yeah. emotionally yeah. speaking, right. but numerically the numbers speaking, are, very yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. The it's a difficult process, but um, mm -hmm. I think we've been very responsive to the, to, to the board and the town as well. Yeah, just to be transparent, too. Um, I don't love the idea of voting the 260 tonight. Because then there's, if you find out that you're still in an override situation, then going back to the 350 is, uh, yeah. it is tough. But do we have the option if, if we bring forward the 260 and then the board, uh, the select board, is going to have to decide what number? Do we have any ability to advocate for, you know, we're not bringing this number forward with the idea of an override? if, if if you're going to base an override on school, like I, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is not the yeah. it's not the regional it's not the regional contract. You're just a you're a you are we yeah. are right. a a part of the town government, and so you could send both budgets forward and say this is the one if you're going for an override that we recommend, and this is the one that if you're not going for an override to recommend, and therefore you're very much you're very transparent. It's very clear to people out there. If they try to do an alternate one to the override, it's like you can come right back and say that's not what we said. Yeah. This is not going to fix the problem. If you think it's going to do this way, please explain how this works within the numbers we're providing you. Yeah, and and and, and that opens up that dialogue. I mean, I think that's. That's kind of where we're nervous know. about the the other number is that what if they try to what if there's an override done right. with that that's not going to work or well, we don't see that working well, let's be let's just say that if you're looking for two budgets these are the two this is the two options with it certainly I don't know what could go what could go wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting I, I didn't even really I mean that's kind of what I wanted to do like one way or another is com in terms of the communication with yeah. to the select board. I didn't think about but, it mechanically. But I, but I don't, I don't, I don't know of any law or regulation that would that prohibit I, that. I, you know, someone call me on my cell phone. It's not a live broadcast. It's not going to help. But the, um, but in the, in the sense of Frontier has a has an agreement that says they have to have a budget to the towns by a certain date. Right. There's no. Yeah. There's no because that's because you're working with multiple municipalities. Okay. So this one is. I don't see why you can't say that. Do they have to schedule an override by? Is that what the Monday? That's yeah, Monday. yeah. For, to be on the, to be on the warrant. Right. Uh, no. uh, uh, gee, so moved. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, 
I didn't I even think of that as a, as, a poss as a possibility. <laughs> but um, so I, it would be essentially our uh, contingent. The only budget. Um, the the only other option that I'm thinking of is you know can you still have a buffer in, in school choice, right? So something in between. The two. Hmm. Yeah. And how, how far would that get us? So I mean, right. here's, here's what I heard is 10K in school choice if we go with a lower number, right. 40K in school choice, 50, 50, 50. for the, the higher number. Uh, so yeah, there's a number anywhere between. But, but we, we cut the school choice because we are at the brink's edge of it's either right. that or programs. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I'd rather, I think I'd rather roll the dice on the school choice, yeah. knowing that the numbers are from what we're seeing are healthy. If you had these reports that they were running, people were talking about, you know, going to different schools or that kind of stuff. And then that you also have a little bit of wiggle room with some of the different finances changing around us. Um, you know what I mean, from different sped increments and that kind of stuff that we know is happening. A small thousand here, a thousand there that could be helpful down the stretch. I mean, I think you're, I mean, the other option is if you're going to reduce the amount, if you're going to increase the amount of savings, then you got to increase the amount of cutting bend. And we can't even get to 100,000 because the next level of cuts goes into, sure. goes into stuff that, that is, it's hard to get back. Um, and I think also the next round of cuts also makes people consider, is this changing the program enough at my school where I should be looking at another school? Right. I don't think we've done that yet. I think we can still provide we still can, it's gonna cause, it's gonna be more work for some individuals, um, but if we can provide the same academic program that was provided this year, next year, you know? Um, I think that's, mm -hmm. you go into the next level, right? right? And it maintains mm -hmm. the extra classroom teacher. <clears throat> right. Um, just so, to, I mean, we don't have to, I mean, I, well, I was making the motion, motion so we could then discuss it yeah, further yeah, or whatever. Uh, made a motion. I, I haven't heard a second. Uh, what are we uh, motioning? To, uh, oh, not two budgets. so to, to pass a second that would be contingent on if the select board opts not to go for an override, then that would be, this would be our um, recommended budget under those circumstances. Or some 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 such. I don't know. Just it, it really kind of clear. I mean, s providing them the information that we that that um, at the, that we are we know what we uh, would do essentially with our budget if that if if that if we were if we were in an overall situation differently. Yep. Yeah. And we would have the higher amount. All right. So the motion would be to. Put forward the budget of two hundred sixty thousand dollars. Oh, actually, it would be two million eight hundred sixty-one thousand two eighty-eight. Right, that one. Yeah. Contingent upon no override, but if the town were to, if the board were to decide upon an override, we would go with the higher number. Right, they borrowed. Two nine five. Yeah. yeah. Five six. You're basically, you're recommending they go with the higher number. It's going to be up to them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. right, you know. So that's the motion. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. So we're there a little bit already. Huh? We're there a little bit already. Yeah, we are. Are, are there other comments <clears throat> of that that we're not like, considering? <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to put myself in the position, and I know they're smart people, and I know they're working hard. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, two overrides in a row won't go down easy. Um, what I'm scared of is three. Right, we had one last year. We go for a small one this year. Mm -hmm. It's a town one, and it's not hung around the neck of the school. But the whole town, the select board and the school committee, mm -hmm. gather around and hold hands and say, "This is what the town needs." And then the next year, the, we still have the structural issue to address. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that we'll go with the town one. I think the the select board was pretty clear that they were, if, if we do go to an override, they would make the, they would craft the language that it is for the school. For the school. So regardless of which number we go forward, if we end up in an overset right situation, it's 
on the school. Right. And then one of the things that we did tell them that is that this is a this is not financial mismanagement. It's not screwing yeah. anything. I, it's this is an honest budget. This is what it really takes to fund the school in the way that the select board wants us to as well. Because the the one thing that kept coming back to was do not fund recurring expenses on variable revenues. And this budget is doing that. And to Doug's and uh, point earlier, because the ta the school has done that, it has enabled the town to spend less on the school, which has enabled them to grow other budgets, right? It, More than they otherwise would have. Regardless of what they say at any meeting, the, the growth has been town growth. Mm -hmm. And the school has helped to stave off some of those costs through choice, which is coming right. to an end. Okay. I also think that next year, I keep looking back and I, that the, the school choice, I just got to make sure I got the numbers right. You know, originally we were looking at 390 and it came to 334 and then it's down to 262. So there's a $127,000 gap that we're trying to recover from because of some miscalculations. We're not going to be looking at that again next right, year. Right, that's true. So just so you know, I was digging up, I don't know, this isn't the final one, but it, when we were doing this last year, uh, for we had recommended uses of 481 from school choice this year, even with the uh, we're, we, what did we get down to in the 350 budget? It's to uh, 262. With, with offloading everything that we've offloaded, your total um, anticipated expenses for FY19 is 351408 so you're still eclipsing and with the extra 57.5 taken out your actual school choice revenue number for this year is going to be 262,872 dollars mm. so you got hit twice yep. right the, i know this fiscal year but now what if we you know passing that that uh 354 increase the total coming out of School choice at that point was what uh, the two sixty eight minus the forty seven or something. So around two two twenty, mm. not not with the budgeted that we had at, uh, at four eighty eight. So, but now I mean the revenue, <laughs> right? So, so the so revenue will be down too, but we won't have come from a place where a year ago we were counting on so much more from that source. So just to clarify. Keith, it's your understanding that if there is an override of any kind, the school is, it'll be for the school. They were yeah. very clear yeah. at that. Okay. They were clear and, at this last meeting. <clears throat> here, yeah. Even here. Yeah, and Doug, you're also clear that... Uh, that it would be for the school? I, no, no. Oh, no. oh. I was going to ask you a different question. Okay. The, uh, yeah. Um, that they're not necessarily talking about not having an override, if we can even get down to this 260 number, we're still potentially looking at an override, even if we propose a lower budget. That's... Uh, I don't know. I, that's the question, that's the million dollar question. I, I, there was the sense of, if we came in with that number, then they might be able to okay. make it... Uh, so it's not clear. It's, it, little, it's not. Okay. It, that's well, not... Well, my conversation, I had a conversation with Scott as well, yeah. and my, I left that conversation feeling that if I reduce the budget by $100,000, they'd be able to get it through then they think, without the override. Okay. That they were going to be able to work, they were going to still working on the numbers, yep. but they may be able to come up with a way of doing that. Right, right. That's and certainly... That's the, immediately what I reported that, out to other people that this is why we're doing this, right. is because... We, you know, it is one avenue of going that, as we've discussed over and over, of different <clears throat> avenues. Of, it, it, there's a, and I think that's what they were trying to work through some more in, in the meeting today, or get correct. maybe, you know, do that in a public way or whatever. But I think that was what they were working at, yeah. if, for sure. So, so it sounds like we so, have a motion in a second yeah. <laughs> to put forward uh, a budget of two eight six one two eighty eight. Contingent on the select board not having an override, but should uh, it be decided that an override is necessary, we would recommend two nine five six nine four six. Right, which is the budget we voted at the last meeting. This is the budget we voted at the last meeting. Two nine five six what? Nine four six. 
So I, I, I agree with that because I've looked at this, the 350,000 in three parts. One is dealing with that $127,000 error. The second part is the negotiated salaries. And then the third part is trying to move everything off of school choice. And I looked at it and um, one of the select board members had asked, you know, how did, how did we get here and what are we doing going forward? And my vision of this is it's a, it's a you know, crisis as opportunity moment. So we have that severe problem with a miscalculation in school choice that we have to recover from. That means that this is the time that we've been kicking it down the road to move everything off of school choice. That's why this, uh, the, mm -hmm. the number is so high. Mm -hmm. yep. So those are two parts. And the other part is the regular negotiated. I keep saying if that, if that miscalculation of school choice had not happened, be next year. Or It'd be next year. We, yeah. But we'd still be sitting with the, the, with the yeah. teacher salaries and trying to move a little bit of money yeah. off of school choice. Yeah. We'd yeah. be able to squeak it through and we'd be right here again next but year. So. The miscalculated school choice is what, 57000 right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, there was an accounting well, error of that the December adjustment was not caught in mid FY18. That was from going from 390 down to 334. Or 334. Yeah, so there was a $56,000. And we, miscalculation was and the 390 in. was brought forward into FY19, so that just sort of exacerbated the problem. Basically, doubled it up. Right. So then it became. But we. Paid, so then the. But we paid for that this year. Yeah. So we've now cleaned all of that up. Right. But it, but in terms of the. We didn't. We how we budgeted. Yeah, it didn't roll forward. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the the deficit we were projecting, which was twenty some odd thousand dollars, we've managed to yeah. deal with everything to. Take care of all the other of that. thing is the additional teacher as well. So mm -hmm. that's another. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's yeah. still in. Right. Right. They're they're still in still in both versions. Yeah. So. And a loss of the expanded income in some yeah. people in the program. Mm -hmm. Recall the question. Okay. Okay. So, so, now, now, now question you have to second. If, if right? the question, so, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, all in favor of moving the question? Or in favor of moving the question? Move the, the question. Okay. Question moved. All in favor. All right, pass unanimous. Oh, I don't think we have. Uh, so the next one is the coordination. So that's the only on the yeah, agenda. But the yeah. only other quick thing is: is there a coordination? Is there another meeting? I don't know how you're going to pull this off. You can have a joint one. I'll, I'll be honest, with you, I'm not sure. The, the town offices are closed on Friday, so I have to be able to get a hold of Sherry right. to be able to post it on the web. Right, right, right. It's possible. We've done it before. But in order to do it 48 hours in time. I don't know that, but again, I don't know that we have to, because I think we've, we've passed stuff in, I feel like, it's all in foggy, uh, but I feel like we've passed stuff in April uh, after, you know, developments, um, from the, from, you know, from the select board. Oh, like to adjust our final vote on yeah. our final. Yeah, if we, if we needed to. So we would have some, we could do it as a, a little more wiggle room and like it doesn't have to be Monday, but basically or Tuesday or. I see. Yeah, I, mean, I think we built a backup plan in And there. we've got a kind of backup yeah. plan in there. All right. So I think we, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I could post, I could try to post a meeting at the same time as the select board meeting at town hall <laughs> so if it's necessary for the school committee to get together, if this is anything wrong here, that they will have a meeting on the books in order to go into session to make a decision. I'm just reaching here. Because you always can cancel meetings. If it's easy I mean, to I'll cancel. Be, You're all, yeah. I mean, many, many of you are going to be at the My assumption would be anyways. if we were to call a meeting, that, that would be the, the route we would go. It would be Monday. We'd all be there. Or I have a hard conflict Monday. Yeah. I'm coming from negotiations, but I'll be there with <clears throat> What time is this? Are like? you going to be there, Maisie? Yeah, I'll be there. So, so you got and I can do so the time is the meeting on Monday, six thirty. Yeah, I start showing up and calls. I can be there. All right. Yeah, if you can get pulled that off, then great. If not, then we'll we have other. Yep. So I'm going to post it Monday at, at six thirty at town hall. In an effort not to kill trees, I didn't give you the full on of this version. I will email, email it to you Thanks. tomorrow. Adjourn. Thank you yeah, so motion, much. Motion, 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 motion adjourn, second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for